All right, this is probably one of the best stories and most inspirational stories. It really is kind of a Christmas miracle. And a Bay Area reporter by the name of Stanley Roberts actually helped uncover it. While doing a story on illegal dumping, he met a homeless man who said he was once in Carlos Santana's band. Well, that random encounter led to a remarkable reunion. And in a moment, we'll speak with Roberts and Carlos Santana. But first, here is this incredible story. How you been, man? Oh, man, it's been a while. You know, I did some research on you. Yeah. You the real deal. You, you thought I was kidding you? Back on December 9th, I had a conversation with this man who was rummaging through piles of trash on Paramain Street in East Oakland. I asked him what were some of the things he found. One time I found an old pair of jeans, and it had about $800, $100 bills. You found an old pair of jeans that had $800 of cash in it? Yes, yeah, I, I did. Out here? Out here on the street. On Permain? Yeah, I just riding by one day. I also asked him what he did with the money. Well, use it to buy equipment. I'm a landscaper and a composer. Then I asked him his name. My name is Marcus. Marcus. Marcus Malone. Marcus Malone. I used, at one time, I was with the Santana Band, the original Santana Blues Band. You were the original Santana Blues Band. And yes. now you're out here picking through all the trash. Now I'm homeless and on the streets. So I went back to visit Marcus to bring him something he asked me to do before we parted ways. I forget your name. That, my name's not important. Yes, it is. No, to me, it is. Your name is important. I brought you, I brought you a friend. Ooh. Mark is the magnificent Malone. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. Man, look at you. Mark is the magnificent Malone. Man, you don't know how I'm afraid to get to see you. Oh, Mark, this is an honor to be in your presence, man. I always cherish you, man. You and your family were so gracious to us. You see, after this story aired, Carlos Santana made numerous trips to East Oakland looking for Marcus. After failed attempts, his manager reached out to me via Facebook, and I went searching and found him in less than 20 minutes. Well, we're going to hook up because of this gentleman, and, you know, I mean, God has to wait, man. And, yeah. This is the only photo of Marcus that I could find. That's him in the sombrero. That's him, man. That's, that's, that's magnificent Marcus Malone, man, all right? He, he's, uh, his spirit is indomitable. Wow, is that a beautiful story or what? So touching. Stanley Roberts, the one who brought us that story, made the um, this discovery and has brought it to us. And Carlos Santana also on the phone with us. So, you know, first you, Stanley, how did Marcus end up on the streets? What is it to that part of the story that you'd like to share? Well, 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 well first of all, I got to say this. The fact that Carlos Santana watches people behaving badly and knew to go out and look for this guy it just blows me away this guy is a rock legend but the the whole story happened by going out during you know oakland has a big problem with illegal dumping mm -hmm. it's been going on for years and um i was just asking people hey what's the weirdest thing you found in this trash and there was this gentleman rummaging through trash and i figured you know what i'm going to ask him the same question and when he said eight hundred dollars you know i was like wow that's a lot of money but he also said he found jewelry too yeah and, and then you did a little digging after he told you who he was and what his history was like in terms of with the Santana Blues Band and come to find out he really is who he, you know, said he uh, was. But did he ever reveal to you or did you learn in detail, you know, what happened? Why did he fall off the map? What were the circumstances that led to him living off the streets? Well, he whispered to me sort of, and, it, and on the original piece I did, which... Um, of, of talking to him, he kind of said to me, you know, I got in some trouble, you know, I ended up in jail. And, and I said to him, I said, you're, you're telling me the truth, right? Because I'm going to go back and look this up. And he goes, no. He says, no, it's the truth. And he says, you know, and he actually, you know, word to me, hey, you know, if you can get me some help, I would appreciate it. Aww. And I said, I'll do the best I can do. Not, you know, thinking that this is just some guy who just is saying, hey. But everything he said to me jived. When I went back and started doing the research, and a couple of guys at Cron, uh, one of the technical guys named John Hands, sent me information that says, hey, this guy spent time in, you know, in prison. And I said, wait a minute, this might be the actual guy. Hmm. Well, even better than that, you didn't just find him help. You helped connect him with Carlos Santana, who is on the phone with us now. And so, Carlos, I understand 
from your point of view, you had been looking for Marcus the Magnificent for a really long time. Um, why were you looking for him? And what did you understand to have happened to him all these years? Hi. Um, well, we knew he got in trouble um, when the band was just about to explode before we went to Woodstock, and uh, he wound up in St. Quentin. You know, we also know that uh, we, we were trying to look for him all these years because we have, of course, royalties. He co-wrote some of the songs in the beginning. Mm -hmm. and, and those royalties go right now to his family, his sister, because there's someone in charge of, you know, all, all, all of that uh, financial stuff for, for him. But the most important thing that I want to say uh, to Stanley is that I'm really grateful that you're doing something from your heart, and to you too, CNN, because obviously there is a need in CNN and also uh, the news. People are starving for some good news, things mm -hmm. that make you cry, uh, tears of, uh, like, you know, the prodigal son re uh, happens every day to a lot of people. Yeah. And, and I think that if I had a chance to talk to my brother, uh, Ted Turner, I would say, congratulations that in the 80s you created this incredible TV station, 24 hours, but now can we create a 24-hour only good news station? Because people need to be touched at the core of their heart, and so they can do other things. Uh, it's, it, I'm going to quote John, Qual, John Coltrane. He said, one positive thought creates millions of positive vibrations. Right now, I'm in a place where I want to invite Stan, Stan, my brother Stanley to connect with Marcus alone. I want to offer him a place to stay in an apartment and get him some congas and just get him out of the street. You know? <laughs> Oh, that is so sweet. And I, I'm sure Marcus would really appreciate that. And Stanley, you're, you really are key in helping to facilitate this because you seem to always know where Marcus is and how to find him. Um, so you've got some great news to now deliver to him, more great news to deliver from Carlos of, you know, really wanting to give him a place to stay. So Stanley. I, I just got off the phone. News, uh, okay. are a, 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 a need right now, uh, obviously, it's gone viral. It's in mm -hmm. India, it's in Malaysia, it's everywhere. And people are crying, you know, and they don't mind crying. They don't mind crying cry. tears of yeah. gratitude and joy. The two brothers can get back together because everybody, we all have people in our family who get misplaced. Mm -hmm. Not lost, misplaced, you know. And, and I think that for me, what I would like to see before I die, you know, is, is a TV station 24 hours that only shows beauty, elegance, excellence, grace, dignity, redemption, and just take the high road, aerial view, the big picture, which is, compassion. Wow. Well, you know, Carlos, your positive vibrations are being felt everywhere uh, now, and this is just so beautiful. It really is a, an uplifting, uh, encouraging story. And just to see how genuinely happy the two of you are to see each other in this videotape we're looking at, um, you know, it, it, is a, it is heartbreaking, it's, it's touching, and it definitely brings a, tears to, a tear to everybody's eyes. So, so now what with your relationship with, with Marcus? You had been looking for him for years. You know, you know, you know, he fell on the hard times, just as you explained, you know, some bumps in the road. But, and you're offering him a place to stay, which is amazing and beautiful and brilliant. And um, what now in terms of your relationship even? Is it, is it difficult to even look in the crystal ball to look ahead? I mean, you've already done so much here. No, no, no. It's very clear. You know, uh, uh, um, there's two things that I'm cons uh, concentrating right now. It's just miracles and blessings, blessings and miracles. Yeah. I want to offer my brother Marcus Malone an opportunity to record on my next album with, with the original band, Greg Raleigh. We wrote a song for him called Magnificent Marcus Malone. Wow. And we want him to play on it. <gasps> and uh, we're going to start, Lord willing, uh, next month. Uh, uh, January or February, so I would like to get, stay in touch with Ugh. Marcus, get him some congas so he can get his hands hard again, you know, because he hasn't been playing congas for a while. And I invite him to be, uh, so, so there's a follow through to Stanley's, uh, um, you know, you, you're a man manifestator. You, you manifestated, you know, you created this thing. You're a will, will maker. Mm. And I, and I, and I, I offer you my, my heart, heart's gratitude, Stanley, because what you did, oh. It's more than, you know, it, it's a story of uh, redemption, like, like uh, Bob Marley. Thank you for being who you are, and thank CNN. All of us together, we can make a difference in the world. And, you know, less, less money for the Pentagon and more money for love. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this. I just got off the phone with Marcus a few minutes ago, and wow. we were both on the phone crying because he is, he, he, he thinks this is a blessing. He wants to get back into the way things are. And I said, you know what? You're a icon of 
history in San Francisco and in the music industry. And you shouldn't be living where you're living right now. And we're going to do everything we can. You know, I'm with Cron for, you know, I've been there for a long time. This is the biggest story I've ever come across. Mm. Um, it all happened by happenstance, being at the right place at the right time. I firmly believe that there is a reason for everything. And I want to see, you know, Marcus perform with the band again. Mm. We all do. Oh, he will. You know, he will. This this is not now on that course. Uh, thank you for everything. You know, I know time is really Beautiful. valuable to all of you. And I will say mm -hmm. that it is really important to invest at this point emotionally uh, with more love, less fear. You know, there's just too much fear on TV. Let's invest in love because you can see that a lot of people all over the world are, mm -hmm. are, are connecting with the story. And then they, in, in return, they will do something for someone ne near them. You know, God bless all, both of you. And, uh, yes, th this course that you started with, with Stanley, with Marcus, it, it's on due course now to, to, for us to have a, a divine story, re divine, be, divine redemption story. And we will offer him, you know, whatever we can offer him to, mm. for him to stand back on his feet. That's with so elegance nice. and grace and live a happy life. Ah, oh, Carla Santana, that is so beautiful. Thank you so much. And uh, Stanley uh, Roberts also for bringing us this story and, and bringing these two men together, Marcus Malone. Um, congratulations for an incredible effort and happy holidays. And it is indeed a beautiful Christmas miracle. And uh, thanks so much to all, all three of you for inspiring us all. Appreciate it. Well, you know, I, you know, I have to say, uh, you know, if it wasn't for Kron giving me the ability to uh, create this segment, you know, we would, this probably would never happen. And had he I not talk, talked to him and just assumed that he was just some guy making up something, this wouldn't be where it is well, today. Well, the beauty, so the beauty of never making assumptions. So, you know, you took it a step further, and I know he's grateful for that. Thanks to all of you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. All the best. We'll have much more in the newsroom right after this.